So don't camp out where God's been. Amen. You know, that's all a religious spirit is, Pastor Ruby. A religious spirit is this. A religious spirit will celebrate where God's been, but will fight where He's going. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, that's shock, shout time. Shock, shout is... Shout, shout is praise God. It's like he hits you and you don't know what to do and then the shout catches up with the experience. Oh, praise is a delayed shout on moose. Come on, that's what I did the first time the Holy Ghost ever told me. He's a religious spirit of fight where I'm going that'll celebrate where I've been. Come on, you ever seen signs say outside advertising the church that they want you to come to? You know, I seen one one time and said, oh, the Spirit of God is moving again. And I was about to say, praise God. The Holy Ghost said, don't praise what sounds good because it's sure ain't sound doctor. And I said, what? Well, he said, Marvin, I ain't never stopped moving. How can I move again if I've never stopped moving? So if it appears I've stopped moving, it ain't because I have, it's because somebody stopped moving with me. Look at your neighbor say, with that said, bust the move, man. Praise God. If you want to see God move in your life, you're going to have to move with God. Come on, get out of here, Holy Ghost. And the reason we can't move with God because we're expecting the same old thing from God we've always had. Come on, church. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, think outside of your last experience with God. A religious spirit, I've seen them. They'll celebrate with what they're familiar with about God. That's all things. That was God. And that is God. But they'll find anything else that they're unfamiliar with about God because somehow they think that their denomination and their experience is so absolute and patterned that God would not do anything else before He checked in with them first. And they're going to breathe. Breathe. That's you must good look at the neighbor say if you ain't shouted ten times by now, hurry up, catch up. Praise God. God don't have to check in with me to do something I've never seen. Come on. Come on. A religious spirit likes to embrace the familiar, and somebody shout, that's a familiar spirit. Which it can actually become an unclean spirit. It's familiar. Hey, I, I know that's the Lord because I've been in service like that before. Here to have it. But when they get to service like they've never been and God begins to do things in, in a style and in a way. And I'm not saying it's on the outside. Amen. Glory to God. It's not on the outside of the boundaries of the written word of God. You can find it there. Now if you can't find it here, come on somebody. Amen. Glory to God. You better call it fruit loop. Pour some milk on and have breakfast. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Because Goofy a lot of times been called glory. So you gotta find it in the word. But at the same time, look at somebody beside you and say, as much as you've experienced God, there's still things you've never experienced him do. So before you call something a devil, before you call something that ain't of God. You better stop and check the book. Amen. It's amazing to me, Pastor Ruby, the people that can't even see fruit no more. Right. Matthew 7 and 20 says, in the Word of God, you'll know them by the fruit. Look at your neighbor say, fruit is not suit. I've seen some things that could speak and uh, uh, merchandise the people in a suit, uh, but they weren't no fruit that was righteous. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They were no real fruit. Look at your neighbor say, if the fruit of righteousness is present, if people are getting saved, if lives are getting changed, I'm talking about authentically being changed. They're turning from their sins. They're repenting and believing on Christ. Hallelujah. Being changed into new creatures. Somebody shout, you better keep your mouth off of it. The Holy Ghost might be just doing something outside of what you are familiar with. Amen. Amen. Preach. Jesus come walking on the water one night on the lake during the storm. Jesus likes to take a walk in the storms. He thought I'd just take us, I'll take a walk. When? Then it's the storm. My God, the waves is where it don't matter. I didn't come to surf them, I'm gonna walk them. Jesus don't surf. He just treads the waves of the sea, Psalms 89, verses 9. And when the waves arise, he steals them. He's just taking him a walk and stroll out there, glory to God, in the middle of a storm on the lake. And the disciples see him come walking. Now before you go ahead and act super spiritual, you've got to put yourself in their boat. They're in a storm. They're thinking, oh God, we're 
going to die. And when they open their eyes, uh, ooh, it's twilight zone time. Do, 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 do. And they go over there. God, who in the what? What my Lord, they were something in that fish we ate. That, boy, what kind of wine was that we was drinking this morning? Here they come to see somebody. They, they know it's him. But they scream out and say it's a phantom. It's a ghost. How do you understand there is a ghost that's holy? And no words that were translated in our day. Oh God, it's a devil. How is it that we believe demons are more supernatural than our God is? Hello. And Jesus is walking to them on the water top in the middle of the storm and they think he's a phantom. They think it's a ghost, an evil spirit and they call it such. Come on somebody. And he just keeps on walking right up to them and steps in the boat uh, and calms the storm. Don't you know they felt like a bunch of idiots? They were about to refuse the very one that they had been following in familiar grounds. They followed him on the seashore. They followed him on the hillsides. They followed him through the cobblestones of Jerusalem. They would seen him walk where they walked, but he was walking supernaturally in a way they weren't used to. Come on, somebody. Amen. And they knew it was him, but just because they'd never seen him do that before, they began to call him a devil. Amen. I wonder how many times we've called Jesus a devil. Just because it's unfamiliar to us. I've had people call me devil so many times just because the way God uses me. Come on. Help somebody. I sleep good at night. It don't bother me one bit. Come on, somebody. Amen. I've been called devil. I've been called witch. I've been called all kinds of names. Come on. When Jesus comes, they're going to call me God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Have anybody here, Holy Ghost? Yes. Somebody one time sent reports, and these people on Saturday just come to one of our meetings uh, uh, just to see. Anytime someone starts wiggling their jaws, you know, Sister Wiggle Jaws and Brother Bucket Mouth, they, they, they want to spend their meals and spend their time and with their little toxic tongue. And, uh, and somebody said, well, Brother Marvin, what you going to do about it? I said, nothing. Thank God for free appetite. Oh, yes. Because they did Jesus that way, they did the apostles that way, and after a while, people hear so much negative, uh, they just get so curious, so curious, George, uh, and they say, well, let's go see for ourselves. Amen. And then when they get there, Holy Ghost gets all over. I've had people come to the devil and talk to people about, about me against and uh, amen because they ain't never seen God operate that way and maybe I was outside of what they were used to so I was a devil because they were used to familiar things and they had a religious spirit, a familiar spirit uh, so they thought they'd attack me because they ain't never seen God work that way. They couldn't even hear the scriptures coming out of my mouth. Uh, they so blind they couldn't see the fruit of people getting saved uh, and bodies getting healed uh, and the Holy Ghost touching and delivering and setting captives free and demons being cast out. Come on somebody. How do you get they just found a place to talk because they ain't never seen nothing like that before. And I've had them same people that's been told that so much negative uh, that would say, well, let's just go. I'm curious. Uh, and get there and the Holy Ghost calls something out in their life. Uh, amen. And they just blew their mind. They knew that they knew that had to be God. Uh, I've had people walk up to me and say, Brother Marvin, we didn't come here tonight because we believe. We come here because uh, we were skeptics. Come on. I had a man, a young boy, 17, in Wisconsin. He walked in an agnostic. An agnostic is not an atheist. They believe there's a God, but they don't believe you can have a personal experience with Him. They believe He's just up there. Hey man, He's the man upstairs. He's so far away from us and He can't really help us and we can't really get to Him. They believe there's a Creator, but they just don't believe that we can commune with Him and have a relationship with Him and that He can interact in our life and change things and change us. Hey man, so they're not a complete atheist. They just don't believe God can interact with us. Come on, He's just up there in the sky somewhere. He said, I came in here that night, and I can remember in the altar service that night as the Holy Ghost began to move. He was a skeptic the whole time. He was there, amen, as a skeptic because of what he had heard and, and what he'd already believed anyhow. He was just an agnostic. Hallelujah. But that night, he just happened to walk up there, amen, at the uh, uh, invitation of uh, one of the teenagers that was with him that was his friend, uh, and they happened to be a believer, so he just thought he'd just walk up there. He was still a skeptic when he walked up there that hour. He was a skeptic about me. I was strange as they come that night. Come on, somebody. I mean, I was doing some kind of weird stuff. Praise God, but I was preaching the Bible. Look at your neighbor and say, God chooses the foolishness of preaching the same thing that I believe. Amen. Come on, somebody. 1 Corinthians 1, 21. Amen. Paul said, I'm a fool for Christ's sake. 1 Corinthians 14. Look at your neighbor and say, who's fool you? And that night, the power of God was just moving and I could see it on this young man's face. He was like, 
kind of at a distance. You could tell he weren't receiving nothing that was happening. No. But out of the invitation of his friend, he walked up there to that altar, and he was just kind of a shadow in the altar, just kind of held back. Well, I didn't know all that. Hey, man, as I went through that altar, laying hands on people, people went falling out. Young people went getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, hey, man, and before he knew it, he was looking at somebody on the floor, he was trying to figure out what was going on. And when he looked up, there I was, and I just reached out, and before my hand could even get to him, like power, electricity, he got hit him, and he went flying through there into the floor. He laid on that floor, it seemed like, for a long time. After service was over, I was at the back, and it 20 degrees below outside. Come on, somebody. But it was hot inside that night. It's back in February. I was taking my camera down, and then putting it in my bag. He walked up with tears in his eyes. He began to explain how my agnostic or I was. When I came in here, I was a skeptic. He said, I know you know what an agnostic is. I said, yes, sir, I sure do. He said, but I'm a believer now. He said, I was a skeptic about that falling out and all this stuff about this God. He said, but I ain't never felt nothing like that in my life. It didn't hurt me. It felt so good. He said, I didn't know. I didn't know that he was just a pride. He said, I believe Jesus is real. He's real. He's real. And I've come to tell somebody tonight, hallelujah, just because you ain't seen God move in a certain way don't mean God don't move that way. The Bible said in John 18 and 6, when they came in the garden to seize Jesus, amen, with Judas leading them with 30 pieces of silver, jingling on his belt, betraying Christ with a kiss, amen, Jesus looked at the soldiers that came with their torches and their swords to take him. He, man, he said, I'm he that you look for. Yeah. Let these go their way. And when he said it, Master Reuben, they all fell backward on the ground. Yeah. Brother, I don't know about all that falling out. I've had people been, man, I've been getting reports of that. That people have told me I, I, I didn't really believe all of that. I, I was a skeptic about that. A lady watching in Tennessee one time. She wasn't sure about all that. She watched too long because the Holy Ghost in that altar service she was watching came through that laptop computer. Hallelujah. When her husband got home, he was about calling 911 because the power of God done hit that Baptist lady. And she got full of the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues just watching the computer. Look at your neighbors say everything on TV ain't a hell. Everything on the internet ain't, ain't, ain't of hell. Come on, somebody. Technology ain't from hell. Hell has abused it and misused it and perverted it. Come on. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? I don't use Facebook but for one thing and that's to preach the gospel. Come on, somebody. I've won people of Jesus on there. I've had them text in and say, how do I get saved? Come on. I've had them call, uh, call in or text in and say, I was watching that video and I got healed. Come on, somebody. I've had them text and say, the devil come out of me. Come on, somebody. Just hear the somebody tell me you know who you are come on somebody that you was watching something and then when I was at the little church in Georgia and the devil that had oppressed you while you was watching it lifted off and left come on somebody get them out of here Holy Ghost yeah. some of us have limited God even with technology and we have claimed everything on the TV screen and everything on the computer screen and everything that comes to the technology of the times that we're in and the latter times we've called it a devil but I want you to know amen God owns the airwaves come on in I know Satan's the prince of the power of the air but God said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all the people that dwell therein Psalms 24 and 1 somebody shout God use anything you give it Be careful what you call the devil. Might just be the Holy Ghost. Might just be the Spirit of God. Amen. Hey, that other one over there, brother. That one, because it's going to get my volume. That other fan. Hallelujah, get my volume. Thank you, Jesus. Since we're speaking to take out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Somebody shout, God wants to do things you know not of. 